All right, all right. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Hope everybody's doing well. Coming back once again with this little video. And as you can see the title up there, I know the truth, but I'd rather stand on a lie. I know the truth, but I'd rather stand on a lie. And I want to go back to Pilate for a moment. Holy Spirit led me to this. Pilate, we all know who Pilate was, the Roman governor of Judea in his time. And we all know he was involved in condemning Jesus to death on the cross. Now, ain't it amazing that Jesus never condemned nobody, but he got condemned. And God said that I sent my son not to condemn the world, but through him the world could be saved. And we got more church folks condemning people and putting them in hell. But they claim to be Christ-like. And we know the story is told in, in the four Gospels. And when I think about this for a moment, and I think about nowadays, how America is trying to kick God out of his own creation. How everything in the Bible now is a lie. And people rather stand on a lie than to stand on the truth. And I also want to bring you to the point in this video about your conscience. It should be eating you alive when you know what's right, but you stand on what's wrong. See, Pilate had a conscience. And it was bothering him. We all know that. Why well, I say you can look at Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke, and we even saw where Pilate called the charges against Jesus. And several times declared Jesus to not be guilty because he knew. He was said, What crime has this man committed? I remember many men in his pictures says Jesus' only crime was love. And Pilate knew his conscience. He felt it in his spirit that. This man haven't done nothing wrong. What they put him on the cross for? What were they locking him up for? Why were they beating on him? Why were they spitting on him? Why, why, why? What crime has this man committed? He was saying, I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. But see, Pilate's conscience was already bothering him. And here's the other part that's overlooked in the Bible. His wife. Pilate's wife. She warned him. She sent him that urgent message concerning Jesus. In that note, it was begging him, Pilate, don't you have anything to do with that innocent man? He haven't done nothing wrong. I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. You can go back to the book of Matthew. See, when you when you look in the book of John, John, that's why I told you that's the difference between the four gospels. They all focus on something more important than the other. They told it they wait. And John, he get in more detail about the trial. And he included a, we can say a, a conversation between Pilate and Jesus. And Jesus, what did he do? He acknowledged himself as a king. And he claimed, he claimed to speak directly for the truth. Pilate responded with that famous question, what did, what did Pilate say? What is truth? Hmm. What is true? Here we got a situation in which truth was compromised in order to condemn an innocent man who never done anything wrong. Mm. Pilate, who's supposed to be seeking the truth, asked the question of the one who is himself, the way, the truth, and the life. A human judge, confused about the truth. Did y'all catch that? He was about to condemn the righteous judge of the world. See, Jesus said, you judge by our human standards, but I judge not. And more and more as we are around her, each day go by, each second, each hour, more and more people, Christians, are going to keep getting into it with each other. Are going to keep seeing things one side. Not all, though. Don't get me wrong with that. Not all, but the majority of Christians are lost. See, when you look at Pilate in the end, Pilate saw the compromise. He knowing Jesus had been handed over to those religious leaders. And we remember what happened with the crowd. See, this is what happened when people get so caught on the crowd trying to fit in. They handed Jesus over. 
it was Jesus and Barabbas. We, we know the story. I ain't going to even go off and all that. The leaders convinced the crowd to cry out for Jesus. No, they had convinced them to cry out to Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Kill Jesus. This man was, was, was guilty, but here is Jesus. I haven't done nothing wrong. That's political pressure. Pilate authorized the crucifixion of Jesus. Why? Because Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd. Uh-oh, I just had something hit me. Why did Obama do what he wanted to do about the gay marriage? Because he got to fit in with the crowd. Forget about what the word of God say. He got to fit in with the crowd. And that's what's wrong with most preachers. They got to fit in with the crowd. Forget about preaching the truth, JT. Forget about standing on what's right because I got a reputation to keep. I got a, I got a keep people thinking that this is the truth when I know it's not the truth you better be careful we got too many people pleasers that's another thing that's wrong with most churches Pilate had the charge against Jesus posted right above his head remember on the cross this is Jesus the king of the Jews Pilate had the charge against Jesus hmm. this is the king of the Jews as soon as Jesus died remember Joseph of, Ar of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus so he could bury him and Pilate granted him the request but the last glimpse we have of Pilate is when he assigned them guards for Jesus tomb we know what happened see back to his wife fellas husbands sometimes you better listen at your wife y'all heard me say sometimes somebody catch that later on she warned him warned her husband just like nowadays Oh, she don't know what she's talking about. So many men, well, you better submit to me like the Bible say. Well, that goes on both sides. So many men only brainwashing their women with submitting to their husband, to me. When you think about God's word, hmm, when you think about Pilate in this particular video, we were talking about Pilate in this lesson, he ignored his conscience. What happens when we ignore our conscience, you two family? How many of us have a funny feeling about something? It's in our spirit, but yet and still, we won't say nothing. How many of y'all sitting in the church right now knowing it ain't right, but won't say nothing because don't touch that anointed man right there. Everybody's not anointed. Don't talk about him. He's, he's a man of God. Is he really? Pilate ignored his conscience. He disregarded the good advice from his own wife. What if he would have listened to his wife? Hmm. He went on, chose the political way, and he went on handing Jesus over because he had to please the crowd. He failed to recognize the truth. Even when the truth was standing right in front of him, it's just like nowadays. The word of God says this, but mankind word is stronger than God's word. Now, let them tell it. Will we accept the true word of God? I know I do. That's why I don't fit in the category with everybody else. Your conscience. You probably, so I don't know who I'm talking to, but you probably got a conscience right now knowing something ain't right wherever you at and you want to say something but you won't you feel something but you won't tell nobody you know things ain't right but yet and still you deal with it you're probably somewhere, somewhere where you know you ain't supposed to be and you got somebody real close to you see you notice all these videos I've been doing lately tie in together I was, talking, I was talking about how can you can you stand being confronted of your sin? Mm. Well, that kind of ties in with this video too about your conscience. Because most of the time we, you ever heard somebody say I should have went with my first thought? You know how many people in prison behind that? You know how many innocent men are getting out now that have been gone for 30, 40 years? You know how many people are just down and out and hurt because of somebody didn't say something. You know how many preachers are still in the pulpit leading 
the congregation the wrong way because won't nobody say nothing. They want to leave him up there because he sound good, he look good, he dress good, but ain't nothing godly really about him. So what is your conscience like right now? Pilate ignored his. How many of us ignore ours? With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cut, cut out and y'all stay blessed. This is real people. We living in some trying times. I'm trying to I keep trying to tell folks, I just hope it's a few listening because I know people are tired of me, but I ain't, ain't worried about that. I'm going to say this again before I end. I'd rather have you mad at me than to have the Lord mad at me because the truth be told, JT don't answer to now one of y'all, none of y'all. I love every, every last one of y'all, but I don't answer to none of y'all. That's why you can't put me nowhere. So I hope y'all are listening. I'm, I'm being like Noah. I ain't going to say I'm going to be here 120 years, but the years that I'm here, I'm going to keep roaring it out, Sister Lisa. I'm going to keep roaring like a lion. And with that being said, peace and blessings to y'all.